After the recent tensions that have been taking place in the black community over in America, we thought it was only right to get together to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement and find out what it means to us. So ladies, I guess the first question is, what does Black Lives Matter mean? And why isn't it all lives matter? Um, I feel that Black Lives Matter means that it is a movement. Yeah. It's a movement and it needs to be recognised and not just by black people, by everyone. Mm -hmm. And right now it's not being recognised. I feel like the term All Lives Matter is, I think, I find it disgusting. I find it dismissive. I find it rude. And it actually, you know, it kind of sickens me when I feel like people actually believe in the All Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I just kind of feel like if you're saying all lives matter and we're talking about situations where it's clear that black lives are not mattering, then that tells me that not all lives matter because, and the people that do say all lives matter, that's telling me that you don't care. You don't care about what's been going on. You don't think it just relates to you, even as a human, you just see us as people that are just completely different, you know, and this is completely irrelevant. There seems to be a consistent pattern of events that continue to happen and it's always involving a black person being shot or killed in some kind of way in the hands of white or non-black police officers and it in America. justified by fear. Yeah. Exactly. So where there's this picture of a consistent pattern of behaviour, mm -hmm. focusing in on that is where the movement Black Lives Matter comes from. Right. So if we're all recognising it, why is it so difficult for some people to see that this specific minority of people are being attacked yeah. and it needs to be dealt with? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's because they don't want to. I think people, race makes a lot of, not a lot of people, I'll say it. Race makes white people uncomfortable. It does, it does make them uncomfortable. Do you know they don't want to talk about it. They don't mm -hmm. want, I think it's a thing, people don't want to accept that white privilege exists. exists. And it's so annoying. It. Like, why won't you take your privilege and be happy like, why won't you admit it? Why do you refuse to understand that we are the one who are being looked at as, as the lower class? Yeah. Why do you, like, you can accept our music, you can accept our culture, but you refuse to accept what is being done to our brothers and sisters. Why? Why is that so hard? It's in the yeah. news. And it doesn't only happen in America. I think what also annoyed me was seeing a lot of influencers and celebrities saying, oh, we're so lucky we don't have it like that in the UK. That's BS. It's a lie. Because we do. We yeah. have it here. It happened to Sarah Reid. We all saw a video of her being beaten and then later she, she you know, she was found dead yeah. in police custody. It happens yeah. here as well. Do you think that black celebrities, black leaders in our community are standing up for this issue and making it something that we really need to take action on? Yeah. Or do you feel that the power that they have still isn't being maximized mm. enough? I feel like it's not, I feel like it's being limited by the media. For example, we had President Obama probably one of the most powerful men in the world. Right. He was talking about it at a press conference. What happens? He gets cut off midway oh, during convenient. his speech. How convenient. So it's like, yes, it's great that they're doing something with their power. I wish a lot more people were instead of being ignorant and once again using the hashtag all lives matter and looking for an excuse to justify it. But it still just shows you that the media are not taking our movement seriously. If they can do something like that to Barack Obama. I think there's a thin line between celebrities speaking out about it and us looking to celebrities as if they're our saviours or our heroes. Yeah. Like they're right. not able to do anything about it. It's, yeah. Should it be it's, more on us? It's more than us just talking about it. Because I yeah. feel like every time there's a new hashtag, we're talking about it and then it yeah. dies off. Give yeah. it a couple of weeks. No something, else no, we'll take over. something else will yeah. take over. We're going to be talking about, oh, Kim Kardashian's pregnant again or <laughs> something else. Do you know what I mean? I feel like in order for there to be a change, mm. there's things within the law that needs to be changed. Yeah. Yeah. Within American law, in terms of the police, they are so backed up mm. by the constitution that they work for mm -hmm. do you know what i mean because there's specific things within the law that says that if you believe that you are under threat mm -hmm. or your life is in danger mm -hmm. you have the right to get your gun out and shoot mm -hmm. this perception <gasps> which is why a yeah. lot of these situations these police officers don't end up in prison because when they go to court or they go for a trial or they you know dissect the whole situation mm -hmm. and they have their lawyer there's always this little piece of claw in the law that Absolutely. allows them mm -hmm. to be right 
as a police officer there's also the other aspect that because i'm black you fear me yeah you automatically have this stereotypical view that because i'm black and i'm a male mm. and i'm reaching for my id or i'm selling cds or something i'm doing something wearing anything a hoodie, wearing yeah. a hoodie right. the moment you make any kind of move if you even breathe wrongly yeah, yeah you're likely to do something, you're likely to have a gun on you, you're likely to attack me, blah, blah, blah. Mm. There's, I've seen videos on Instagram where three, four, five police officers are struggling to hold down a white person, a non-black person, mm. and that person is fighting them, resisting arrest to the point where they run away and they didn't get shot. Yeah. Why yeah. is it that a black person where there's four or five of you on top of him, yeah, he hasn't got a gun on him, but you still feel the need to shoot it's him. The me- so, it's the media. It's the media. So it, it goes back to the media perception. My 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 issue with this is that okay, it could be a situation where you're fearing your life, mm. but why is it that they shoot like six times? Why is it that then th- th- aren't they trained to like shoot, shoot in the leg, leg. They're exactly they're shoot something? You know, it, I and know if you're scared it's... of someone because of the color of their skin, you should not be a police officer. Yeah, of course, mm. they literally have no remorse. And that's what's annoying me is that people are making out like this is a this is an equal thing, like it happens to both races. Yeah. And I think what annoys me more is another thing, is when people say black people kill each other all the time. That annoys me because black people are not killing each other because of race. They're not doing that. Policemen are doing that. They're not right. they're not shooting in the leg because they know you might they're kill, they're shooting and aiming to kill. to kill. They know what they are doing. A lot Speaking more. Speaking of marches. Did any of you attend the Black Lives Matter march in, in the UK? UK? No. no. I did, I went to one. I went to one. Went to one. How, I went to so one. how was that for you? It was interesting. It was very, very interesting. I think even you were saying something earlier. I about... found myself in one. Um, don't get me wrong as well. Like, it has to be more than hashtags. Um, it's got to be more than online conversations. So it was interesting for me to actually end up in one accidentally mm-hmm. and feel this overwhelming presence whilst the I was The solidarity there. of everybody solidarity, coming together was a but, lot. But then also it felt overwhelming because it. I actually realised that, whoa, I am black. Yeah. Wow. This is an issue for people yeah, like me. Yeah, for, yeah. This is a skin colour issue yeah, because yeah. it was just, wow. it just, to, just to see the difference between you just saw this masses of majority black mm-hmm. and and lots of other diverse um, races and communities in the march but then you still you still saw a lot of people kind of on the outside yeah. looking in um you know taking pictures or whatever the case may be just going about their day and not even blinking an eye yeah, to yeah, the yeah. march that was going yeah. on so it really isolated everyone in that march mm-hmm. and it isolated me mm-hmm. and it kind of it was like almost a bubble effect like mm-hmm. this is happening to us and we need to be loud now no. before it gets out of hand. Um, yeah, so I just, I walked away feeling super overwhelmed. Also for me, I feel like sometimes we walk in our own bubble and, you know, almost like when you said that when you went there, you really, it's like, it was, obviously you know it concerns you, but it's like being there was like, whoa. It's a reality. It's a reality. Kind of and I feel yeah. like it's so easy to kind of walk in this bubble of like, it's not affecting me. It's not affecting yeah. me. I'm not it's different. Happening out I'm there. not different. No, mm. I'm not getting treated differently. No, 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 no. They're not looking at me funny because I'm black. No, it's fine. No, they're not saying anything. They think I'm a bit aggressive, but it doesn't really mean anything. Do you right. know what I mean? You kind of walk in this bubble where you don't. And I think for me, when I saw you know the signs, I saw everyone march, and I was like, whoa, this is actually our battle. It's it's like it's important to us, but then we move on to our regular lives the next day. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but this is that's actually why I'm our saying battle. that. Yes, we do the marches, thing. but there needs to be other. What's next? There needs to be objectives. There needs to be aims. There needs to be a plan, a strategy of how things are going to change. Yes, we'll march today. We'll march tomorrow. But then after we've all gone home and we continue to live our lives. What is actually happening in order to create dialogue? What actually people that are in power right now in America? What is happening? That's why people that work within governments and legislations and laws, and they need to then begin to think, okay, this is happening. I'm in this position where I can do something about it, or I can lift my voice, I can put a petition out or whatever and speak to my fellow colleagues, and I can actually make a difference. And I think we need to support those people and be like, look, we've got your back. Whatever it is that you need us to do, whether we need to put a petition round and get a million people in order to change a law, in order to 
put something in there, so then we're, we're behind that. you. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. it's great that we're all talking about it, but it's also important that people that actually have the ability to mm -hmm. do something mm -hmm. in whichever way, shape or form, yeah. we need to support them as well. Heels off live. For the first time ever, the ladies are taking their sofa discussions out of the studio and into a live audience, giving you the chance to join in on the debate on Sunday the 14th of August at 6pm at Queen of Hoxton, London. Get your tickets now from eventbrights.co.uk and heelsoffshow.co.uk. Heels off live.